keyboard is your best friend when you're editing your movie. Trust me, you can be so much faster and so much more efficient with your keyboard than you can with a mouse. To access the keyboard customization screen, just go to the top left to DaVinci Resolve, Keyboard Customization. You can also hit Option Command K on your keyboard if you're on Mac. Okay, notice on the top right it says DaVinci Resolve. This is the current preset we're operating under. If you hit the down arrow, you'll see some other ones. What these will do is set up your keyboard mappings similar to these applications. So it can be helpful if you're used to Avid and you're jumping into Resolve and you want the same mappings that are default for Avid. However, I create my own custom presets. And so to do that, start at DaVinci Resolve, then click the three dots and do Save as New Preset. Go ahead and name it, click OK. Now any changes we make to the keyboard mappings will be in our own custom preset versus overriding the default DaVinci Resolve preset or any of the other ones. So what are we doing here? Well, first to find out what a key is mapped to, you can simply click on the key and under active key, it's going to show you what it's mapped to. Another way you can do that is simply press the key on your physical keyboard. So if I hold down C, it's gonna show me. And yet another way is to go over here to the search field and search for the function that you want to map. We'll look at that in a second. What you need to understand is that there are application level and panel level keyboard mappings. And they're identified right here in the center column. So just know if you change something at the application level like cut, it affects all areas of resolve. But if you change something at a panel level, it's only going to affect a certain area of DaVinci Resolve. So for example, let's click on search. I'm going to leave this at show all. You could search for functions that are already assigned to a key or unassigned to a key or that have been modified. But just leave it at show all for now. And I'm going to search for cut. So we have cut under edit and edit is at the application level. We also have cut under cut timeline. Cut timeline is under panels. Now you'll notice they're the same, command X. And normally that's what I'm doing. If I map something on the keyboard, I typically want it to work in every area of resolve versus a specific panel. But just know this is how this works. And something else with that, if you change a mapping at the panel level, it only changes it for that panel. But if you change a mapping at the application level, it's going to change it there and all of the panels as well. For example, let's go to Edit Timeline, and for Cut right there, I'm going to click on it to change it and do Shift-W. And if I go up to Edit, which is application level, Cut is still Command-X. If I go down to Fairlight, which Fairlight Timeline is a panel, it didn't change it. It's still Command-X. I'm going to click this to reset that, and that put it back to what it was. Now I'm going to go up to Edit and change Cut at the application level. And now you'll see what happened it changed it under the panels as well. So that's how that works. If you want to remove a mapping completely, you can use the X. And with it gone, if you want to add a mapping, you just click by the function that doesn't have a mapping at all, and then type in the key that you want to use. So let's cancel out of this and reopen the keyboard customization tool. I'm going to show you a specific mapping that I couldn't live without. But before we do that, I want to explain what's going on up here with the different shades of colors. Medium gray means there is a mapping at the application level. So if I click on Y, there it is. Select clips for it on this track. Light gray means a panel mapping. So for example, C here is dark and light gray. So that means no application level mapping, but a mapping at the panel level. So if I click on that, sure enough, there's a mapping for the fusion page. And if I look under panels, we see fusion page. Whereas V has a mapping on the fusion page, but then it also has a mapping at the application level. Make sense? So I've got a lot of specific mappings that I personally use. I've been using them for years as a filmmaker, regardless of what nonlinear editing system I've been cutting on. I'm going to show you one mapping I really like, and so we'll just walk through again how to do this, and then also how to remove a conflicting mapping, etc. Let's do it. The mapping is zooming on the timeline. So if I go here to search, type in zoom, and look for it under view. There it is. Zoom in, zoom out. Now obviously we have these icons that can help us with that, but those are way too slow when you're editing. And as you can see, Resolve already has some mappings for this. However, I don't want to hit Command minus to zoom out. I just want to hit one key. And for me, the fastest keys are the up and down arrow on the keyboard. So I'm going to start with zoom in. I'm going to remove both of these and then hit the down arrow. Now it tells me, hey, down arrow is already assigned to playback next clip. And then it says, do you want to assign this keystroke? I personally do because I never move to the next clip with the keyboard, so I'm going to click Assign. However, Resolve is letting me know that there's a problem because Zoom under View is at the application level, 
and that's conflicting with something under playback also at the application level. And so that's not gonna work. So what do you do? We well, simply click the exclamation point and it's gonna show you the mappings over here. So right now at the application level, we have zoom in and a clip mapping. Click on clip and I'm going to remove it or I could change it to something else. But as I mentioned, I don't use the keyboard for moving to the next clip anyway, so I'm just gonna hit the X. Now the warning is gone. I'm gonna search for zoom again, go to zoom out, and set this to the up arrow. Again, the same problem. Click assign, click the exclamation point, clip, and remove it. And now if I click save and close this, here on my timeline, I can quickly zoom in and out with the arrows, which I love. Now a little side note. Rebuilding your keyboard mappings if something happens to your computer or if you're on another system is a pain. Trust me, I've had to do it more than once. My recommendation is back up those mappings and even export them to a USB drive that you keep with you. And that way if you're on a computer that's not yours and you're, you have to cut something and resolve, you can just load those up. Super nice. Just jump back into the tool, click on the three dots, export preset. So I'll go down to the custom one here and export that and it'll just ask me where I want to save it. And if I wanted to load that preset, I would import it. And of course, if I want to choose my custom preset, once I've imported it, I hit the down arrow here and it will show up on the bottom like these. And that's keyboard mapping in a nutshell in DaVinci Resolve. Hey, if you like this training and you're an aspiring filmmaker, specifically you want to direct movies, I highly recommend you check out my online film school, Write and Direct, writedirect.co. In a nutshell, I'm teaching you how to be a filmmaker from development through post-production. I teach you how to do it all so that you're unstoppable, as Robert Rodriguez says. I've seen directors held back because of a lack of knowledge, and Write and Direct addresses that. It also sidesteps the crazy expense of going to tra traditional film schools. Because if you do that and then jump into the industry, you're going to realize something. Nobody hires you based on your education. It's a sobering fact if you spent all of your money on that education. Write and Direct teaches you how to make movies, how to do it right, for a fraction of the cost of traditional training. Hope to see you there, writedirect.co. And if not there, I'll see you on the channel very soon. Thank you.